Now I'm going to show you some more advanced stuff you can do with our Dynamic Shapes feature. Let's start with the document we created in our basic tutorial for Dynamic Shapes. In this tutorial, I won't be needing this icon, and I'll also get rid of the text here. I'll also make this frame a little bit bigger while holding down the command key, like this. I'd like to make this rectangular button into some sort of chat bubble. Let's create a new square here and set its corner radius to zero. Now I hold down both the command and shift key to rotate the square by 45 degrees. Next, let's select both these shapes and use the union boolean operation to create a single shape. Now the bubble is ready. Note that it is no longer a rectangle. By applying the boolean operation, we have transformed it into a bezier. I can easily edit the bezier. When dealing with resizing frames, beziers behave really differently than regular shapes. You can actually define the resizing behavior of each bezier control point separately. For example, that means that this control point will maintain a constant left margin from the enclosing frame, and a constant top margin from the enclosing frame. The bottom and right margins are both flexible. I'll just show you how this works when I resize the frame. This should move the bubble, but not resize it yet. That's what I want to change. I'll return to the bezier and select all these control points here and ensure they all maintain a constant left margin. Then I'll select the control points on the right side and make their right margin constant too. Let's proceed to the top control points. They are set properly. Their top constraints are already rigid. Finally, the bottom control points should maintain a constant bottom margin. Let's try that out. When I resize the frame, you can see that the bubble resizes too. We're nearly finished, but the arrow here still doesn't behave how I want. I'd like it to stay in the center of the bubble horizontally, so it won't be on the side, like this, when the bubble is resized. To do this, I can create another frame here. This is a pretty important feature. You can actually nest frames. Like regular shapes, nested frames will also resize together with their enclosing frame. Now when I resize the enclosing frame, everything should behave as I want. I'll make this enclosing frame a little bit smaller while holding down the command key. It's important to remember that when you hold down the command key, you can resize the frame without also resizing the enclosed shapes. Let's rename this to Bubble Button. Now I'll switch to Style Kit and export the code files into my Xcode project. Back in Xcode, everything is how it was left in our previous Dynamic Shapes tutorial. I'll just change the method here to draw bubble button with frame, like this. When we finally launch the app, you can see three bubbles with three sizes without any pixelation or deformations. So that's how you use nested frames with beziers. Thanks for watching.